Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, lately we've been talking a lot about factoring the quadratic formula, completing the square. Um, today we're going to look at the graphical representation of second order polynomials. So in short, I'm just going to say graphing. Okay, a few um, things to cover first. Remember we have our um, Cartesian coordinates here. Okay, say so this is the y-axis, the vertical is the y-axis, the horizontal is the x-axis. Okay, and we can number these. One, two, three, four, five, six, etc. And again in the y, one, two, three, four, five, six, you can go as far as you want. Um, I'm just limiting it to this for our example here. <clears throat> now, if we're given a coordinate pair, let's say uh, here, okay? So it's the x coordinate first, then the y coordinate, all right? So x, we're over one, two, three. So I'm gonna write a three. How far up? One, two, three, four, five. So this is three comma five. That is our point. Now the uh, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Our coordinates also extend into the negative region, both in the x and y direction. So if I put a point down here, okay, remember, x first, then y. Uh, how far in the x? One, two, three, but that's to the left, so that's gonna be negative three, and then y is one, two, so negative two. Okay, so any two points define a line. I can draw a line between those two points. If I employ a straight edge, Okay, now you may remember from high school algebra that any line can be described by two things, the y-intercept and the slope. So the y-intercept, where does it cross the y-axis? The slope is how steep. Okay, so I could shift this up and down change the y-intercept, I could spin, I could, uh, what, let me get more room here, I could twist this, right, make a shallower slope or a steeper slope, I could even go all the way, now it's a negative slope, okay, so by rotating it, I'm changing the slope, by sliding it up and down, I'm changing the y-intercept. Okay, so that's important when we uh, get to transformations. You'll see there's a little bit more going on with a uh, with a second order polynomial. Think of a line as a first order polynomial. So a little side note, right? Uh, y equals mx plus b. Okay. So this is like, uh, you'll see it in this form a lot. Another way of thinking of it is a times x to the first plus uh, b times x to the zero. Okay, x to the zero is one. First order polynomial. Second order polynomial, that's what we've been looking at. ax squared plus bx plus c. Okay, again, we could think of this as x to the first is just x, x to the zero is one. Okay, second order polynomial. The, uh, the shape of its graph is called a parabola. Okay, that's got a, a U-shaped curve, okay? So, uh, parabola, we can also move that up and down, side to side, or even uh, flip it. 
and we can stretch it or squeeze it. So there's a lot of transformations we can do with that. Uh, we'll get there. First of all, let's look at a let's look at an example. Y equals x squared minus seven x plus twelve. Okay, so I've defined a second order uh, polynomial. How are we going to plot this? Well, we'll start with uh, a table of x and y values. So, x, y. So, I'm just going to start at 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Uh, we'll see we'll see what happens with that we'll see here shortly that the table method does have a disadvantage of just by looking at the equation I don't know right away whether my vertex is going to be over here or over here so it can we can be <laughs> guessing around where we start our table value so um, now we're just gonna plug it in okay so y uh, x is 0 okay so that's gonna be 0 squared 7 times 0 plus 12 okay well 0 is 0 7 times 0 is 0 12 is all we have left so 0 and 12 so you can see 0 we're we're off the the scale here um, if I plug in a 1, okay, 1 squared, 1, minus 7 times 1 is 7, plus 12. So, minus 6 plus 12, that's going to equal 6, all right? Plug in a 2, we'll just carry on. So, 2 squared is 4, 7 times 2 is 14, and adding 12 we get, uh, what is that, 16 minus 14 is a 2, okay, uh, plug in a 3, alright, so we get 3 squared is 9, 7 times 3 is 21, so 9 plus 12 is 21, minus 21 is 0. So 3 and 0. Okay, uh, 4. So I'm going to plug in a 4. 4 squared is 16. 7 times 4 is 28, plus 12. So 16 plus 12 is 28, minus 28 is 0. Huh. Well, that's interesting. We'll come back to that. Now 5. 5 squared, 7 times 5, 12. So 25 minus 35 plus 12. So 25 plus 12 is 37, minus 35 is 2. Okay, so I've uh, spat out some numbers. I've uh, plugged in the x values to spit out the y values. Now, let me erase this, we'll plot. So remember our, cart our um, coordinate pairs on the Cartesian plane. Uh, well, 0, 12, that's somewhere up here. Uh, 1 and 6, so that's over 1, up 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I'm going to put a dot there. 2 and 2, over 2, up 2. Uh, 3 and 0, over 3, up 0 is right there. Uh, 4, 0, over 4, and up 0. 5 and 2, okay, uh, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up 2. Okay, if I plugged in a 6, okay, you can check me on this, but I should get a 6, okay. So now it's a matter of connecting the dots. We're going to, all right, and I'll draw this to indicate it keeps going up. This is called a 
parabola. Par parabola is the name we call this graph of a second order polynomial. So what are some features? We have, uh, well, th this one you can't see it, but it does up here have a, uh, it does have a y-intercept. Okay, and in this case, that's going to be 0, 12. Uh, down here, we have two things. These are sometimes called roots. They're also sometimes called uh, the zeros. I don't know if I spell. The zeros of a function because that's the the x value at which the y value is equal to zero. So if you hear that term, it's uh, synonymous with the roots of a function. Uh, this point here, this point at the, the bottom is called the vertex, okay? That's the lowest point. Or, uh, well, if it's upside down, if we flip it upside down, the vertex would be the highest point. So depending on your context. We used the table method to plot a parabola. So by picking the x values, plugging them into our equation, it'll spit out the y values. Then it's a matter of plotting the coordinate pairs and connecting the dots. Then we can identify things like the, uh, the y-intercept, the, uh, the zeros. You can also call these the x-intercepts because they intercept the x-axis. So we have uh, what, three, three terms for the same thing. And the vertex, the in this case lowest, but sometimes the highest point of a parabola. So uh, next we'll be talking about parent functions and transformations. One thing I forgot to mention earlier was the connection to the roots of a uh, polynomial. So remember, um, I erased it, so I had to redraw our table for the example x squared minus 7x plus 12. Now if I'm to plot these points again, uh, so over 1, up 6, uh, over 2, up 2, over 3, up 0, 4, 0, over 5, up 2, over 6, up 6. All right, so I mentioned we have our vertex at the very bottom, which, by the way, if, if the parabola crosses the x-axis, the, the vertex is in between the two roots. So keep that in mind. Um, so what, what do we notice? These are zero. Well, what, what is the significance of that? This is how we tie it back to factoring from before. Uh, where, what are the x values of this? Three and four. So if I were to uh, foil that out, x minus three, x minus four. Okay, I, I picked that from here, right? These are special for that reason. Now if I foil first, outer, inner, last, I'm gonna get x squared, uh, minus 4x minus 3x negative times negative is a positive I can combine these like terms x squared minus uh, 4, 4 and 3 7x plus 12 looks similar yes it does okay because the roots or the zeros or the x-intercepts of this graph correspond to the factors. So that's, what, that's what's going on when we're using the illegal method or the um, quadratic formula to find the roots. We're looking for the x-intercepts, okay? So that's important, keep that in mind. That concludes this lesson. To see more videos like this one, consider subscribing to my channel. 
That way, you will receive notifications when I post new lessons. Also, be sure to utilize the comment section below for any questions or suggestions you may have. If you enjoyed this video and learned something new, please click that like button. As always, thank you for watching. I will see you next time.